When I, when I work in a medium, I like to sort of respect the medium for what it is. Um, what, I like, what I like is, first of all, glass doesn't smear onto your clothes because I'm very much an oil painter. Glass has certain properties that are many times translucent. And I, I love uh, stained glass windows, but I don't know how to bend the, the metal and I don't know how to do that. So my idea in working with glass was more about um, taking a sheet of glass like I have here and piecing together a puzzle out of different colored glass, like a mosaic, and then firing it and fusing it together. Hello, my name is Margaret Garcia. Welcome to my studio. glass is opaque and some glass is translucent so if you work with it in a way so that there are areas that glow and illuminate while others uh, create a silhouette against it and then you have glass that is iridescent like this glass is iridescent that means it has a rainbow effect on it and then there's a uh, glass that is what's called dichroic, and it has a metallic finish on it. Some glass, when it comes in contact with other colors, has a chemical reaction and leaves a ring on it. And some colors just sort of blend or change. So you have to learn the qualities of the glass as you go along. Um, I liked the, the idea of creating a platter, but one of the things I like is having a circle inside of a circle. And I started learning uh, with Kathy Milligan, who told me that cutting a circle inside of a circle was close to impossible. So that was the first thing I wanted to try to do, because I like doing things that are hard. And my circles would break but I would fuse them together anyway and I would create a void in the center so that you could see a, uh, different uh, patterns and colors uh, of the glass going through it so you can hold it up. There's ways that you can work with glass where you can uh, do a dam so that the glass doesn't melt beyond the dam or you can cut it into a circle and leave it that way. If you do a platter or a plate, you cut all the pieces together and you fuse them onto a, a clear piece of glass. Then uh, after you've done that, you have to take a second firing and you put it into a mold where it slumps and that's where it sits. And the one thing, you know, you're always struggling, I'm always struggling to achieve in my painting is a luminosity. I enjoy looking at a painting that has this sort of glow to it. And the thing that you do get with glass in ACES is luminosity. It has a glow, especially if you decide to light it from behind and you allow the, the translucency of the glass to, to speak for itself. Um, I don't like to use glass to imitate something else. I want glass to look like glass.
So there are, in creating my puzzle for the image that I'm trying to create, there are two different approaches that you can do. One is to Photoshop it and, and work it in Illustrator, take it to someone who does CAD, that's computer-aided design, and have the program cut out all the pieces for you in Waterjet. And when you do something like that, it's very, very precise. And so you can get a very precise puzzle by doing something like that. This piece of glass uh, has cuts that were made through Waterjet. And some of those were used for the Selena pieces that I made. So I didn't do the entire thing as, uh, as computer-aided design. I did the, the parts that really needed finesse and detail. But there were other places around the collar and the background where I was a little more free to be, become abstract. And I just wanted to make sure that I held the, the face in the right place. One of the things you do when you're working with the ring saw is you cut all your pieces out like you were a puzzle. There are places, for instance, this is a, a photocopy. And several copies were made because we weren't sure which one was going to work. And I take this copy and I rubber cement it onto the color glass that I want and then I rubber cement over that and I give it about two or three coats so it's water resistant. That way when I take it over to my ring saw and I start cutting, the paper doesn't disintegrate. It stays intact. When I do oil paintings, I don't pretend that there's something else. I don't try to make oil paintings look like acrylic or, or prints or anything else. I, oil paintings are oil paintings. Glass is glass. And the media needs to speak for itself. And you need to work in a way and in a fashion that accentuates the, the nature of the medium. That's my belief. Um, some people like... Uh, using a medium in a way and trying to make it look more like something else that it's not. And um, I, I like glass. I like the translucency of it. And because the history of glass is such that, you know, we have stained glass windows in churches and you can put them up in windows, that there, it, it transmits a sort of spiritual quality, a sort of quietude that you can sort of look at that piece and just sort of stare at it and, and examine it and be at peace with it. You know, that, that's what I like about glass. Well, it struck me, I found it on the internet, and um, I, it, it was, I don't know who shot it, but it was about what was going on on the, I believe in the Gaza Strip, or when they, they moved the American embassy into Jerusalem, there were a number of deaths among the Palestinians, and one was a little girl. And I was so touched by the anguish of this family. And I don't do a lot of political pieces. So for me, this is sort of a, a political piece. Um, I, I don't work, I don't do a lot of uh, slogans and a lot of political work. 
but I was so touched by the experience of these people that I wanted to respond. And it was my, my heart, <clears throat> my compassionate side, you know, kind of rising up and saying, oh, we need to do something to, to, to protest or to mark or to acknowledge the, the situation with these people who are suffering in these horrific conditions. And I, I'm not telling people what to do, what not to do. Uh, I, it's not that I am against the war, it's that I am in favor of peace. And I think that that's really where I want to make my statement. Uh, so it's, it's slow going on this piece, but I'm working on it and it is slowly coming together. And as soon as I have all the little gaps in here and all these little pieces tidied up and shaved down so that they fit smoothly, I will uh, go to Pacific Glass and I will sit there for a day. It'll take me a day to put all the powdered frit and glass between all the edges from one to another so uh, that that the glass fuses evenly and it isn't left with big holes or indents. So that will be the next step that I take. being hand cut. I'm not using a computer to, to cut it out, but it's done in the same fashion and in the same way that a acetates and separations would be done for silk screening. It's done in the same manner. So the blacks would be one stencil and you would take that and you would put it on your glass and then you would cut it out. You'd put your black down, your gray down, your blue down. And you know, sometimes they have chemical reactions between the glass, and that's what I'm talking about. As well as I like, um, I like using some of the dichroic glass um, because it gives it a little sparkle. It's an accent that I truly enjoy. I like he high key color. Um, and this one doesn't have a lot of sparkle and there isn't a lot of dichroic and gold or anything like that. There's something much more somber for me on this particular piece that I'm working and it takes a little more finesse. So it means that I have to take the pieces over to the ring saw and then just sort of um, you know, grind them down until I got uh, until I've got exactly the, the the space I need between the pieces. There's other colors that need to to be worked out. Like this one it is a little too big, and so what I do is I start shaving it down on the ring saw, and I start working it down until, and I keep going back and forth until it fits. The ring saw is a saw that has a band, um, I, I want to say a band uh, wire that ha has diamonds on it, industrial diamonds. And then what happens is it goes through the water that the water keeps the temperature of the blade cold so that it doesn't overheat and snap on you. So you have to have um, a ring saw that has a water reserve in the bottom. The band, the wire band, works through the saw and works its way through the water with the water reserve in the bottom. And then all the little uh, glass pieces fall through to that and you get a little bit of watery sludge in your band saw.
I have a piece by David Fleury that we've started working on and it's been mapped out so we start figuring out Summer has done this for me. So we have the colors demarked in terms of the shapes. And this is upside down to you, but um, we start filling in the red. The next is the yellow and the blue. And uh, we take a piece of glass, whatever color we decide to do. And uh, like I did on this particular piece, we drew out uh, puzzle pieces like this and I rubber cemented this onto the glass and then I rubber cemented over this maybe two, three layers so that it was water resistant so that when I take it to the ring saw, it's not going to disintegrate on me because the paper will just dissolve and you'll lose your pattern. Plaza de la Raza and the old Lincoln Park had like cement elephants and I remember uh, exiting and they had these beautiful cement elephants that have since been reclaimed by the LA County and moved to the LA Zoo. Uh, but uh, Lincoln Park itself had uh, an alligator farm, it had ostrich rides, it had a carousel, it had a lot of wild animals and the Zelig had used it as a film studio for Tarzan, and the original Tarzan was filmed there. They had boats and all these other things. And now uh, we have Plaza de la Raza, which has functioned to sort of preserve the existing culture there in East LA. Um, so there are uh, lots of music, uh, dance, uh, mariachi, uh, in musical instruments and art. Uh, a lot of Chicano artists have exhibited there and have taught there. Uh, I teach, I've taught there, I teach there, Frank Romero teaches there. I think Sergio Hernandez used to teach there. He's the one that used to do all the political cartoons. Uh, Roberto Gutierrez has taught there. Uh, so we have a lot of uh, people, Jose Lozano. Um, so it's, it's been a, a sort of a gathering point for a lot of Chicanos to be able to go there and, and get a gig and teach a class, which has been really good for the artist and for the community. If I'm an artist, and I guess it's me defining myself, to be an artist isn't for me just a question of creating art. Painting a painting, making a glass paint, doing ceramics, making tile, making toys, making any of the other projects that I've brought into Plaza. It's about creating community and creating projects that allow our community to kind of come together over the, those things, either because they speak to who you are and express something about who you are or something that you care about, or that there is patronage behind it because it's even that patronage. And patronage is not just and only about money. Patronage is you show up, and you support your favorite artist, you support the event, you're, you're there to advocate on behalf of your, your favorite artist and the favorite work that you like. That's creating community. And being able to speak up and say, oh, you know, I love this art. And being able to use art in a way that you're creating sort of like guiding posts or data points that other people can follow and use to help themselves creating economic plans 
of sustainability to facilitate the artist to advance and move ahead and sustain themselves as artists. I'm Margaret Garcia. Thank you for visiting. Mm -hmm.